Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to work on the big monster cane mill project that we have slowly been working our way towards the finish line on. And uh, today we are back to work on it and again, working on pouring some Babbitt bearings. So, uh, so far we've got the big drum mounted up here. We got the big bearings poured for this. Uh, now we're working on the drive system, which are these gears. There's a, basically a two sets, two shafts with some reducing gears that are gonna go in here that will take the power from a line shaft pulley that we'll mount over here on the end and that will drive the whole system here uh, to go it. And there'll be some gear reduction going on and speed reduction as well to turn the big drive back here, which is uh, takes a good bit of effort because of the weight. So right now, I think what we're gonna do is get in here and start working on these Babbitt bearings. First thing I need to do is get my shafts uh, cleaned up and to size, um, I think that I'm gonna use a pouring mandrel for these rather than using the actual shafts. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, I was planning on using the shafts, but uh, I had to modify my plans a little bit once I kind of got to looking at things. And, uh, but anyway, let's zoom in here, show you what we gotta do. And we're gonna get started on this and see how far we get today. I got you looking here at the whole gearing system to power this mill. Now you gotta remember when this mill's running, it's running at a pretty slow RPM, five, 10 RPMs, not very fast. You're feeding the cane in, uh, you need to have it time for it to actually crush it and squeeze that juice out. So it's not like something you're running super fast. Uh, so to, to get that speed down, they have to go through this gear reduction. This mill I happen to know is being powered by a big gasoline engine. Uh, Fairbanks Morse, uh, it's kind of like a hit and miss engine, but it was a big one. I, I don't know how many horsepower uh, I'm gonna say 25, 30 horsepower or something like that. The, the gentleman that I'm restoring this for actually still has the original engine that powered this and he is getting that restored as well to power it with. So that's gonna be pretty cool when it's all up and running. But he's gotta get that speed reduced, uh, you know, off that, that engine going down to whatever this is gonna run. And also when you're doing this uh, gear reduction, you're also multiplying your torque. So if you, you know, have a, uh, 10 to one ratio. So if you turn in this shaft 10 times to turn this one once, you're actually multiplying the torque by 10 over here. So if you have a hundred pounds of force over here, you'd have a thousand pounds of torque over here. So all this kind of works out. Anyway, I've gone in and I've done some calculations. This big gear has 77 teeth in it. Uh, the small gear down here that's driving it has 13 teeth. Uh, when you do that math, that's a 5.9 to one ratio. So basically you have to turn this shaft 5.9 times, almost six times to turn this one over here one time. And then you've got a big bull gear on here that has 42 teeth. I've got it up in the storage building. It's not on here right now. That goes to this one. And this one again has 13 teeth. So you got a 42 to 13, which you, um, Simplify that out, that's a 3.2 to one ratio. So you turn this shaft 3.2 times to turn this shaft one time. Um, and when you multiply them together, if I did my math right, this one actually turns out to, from this shaft to this one over here, 18.95 to one. So you would have to, just let's just say 19 times. You have to turn this shaft 19 times to get this one to turn one time. And there's actually another uh, reduction that goes on as well because out here you got a big pulley. This pulley on here is four feet in diameter and the pulley that's on the, the engine is gonna be considerably smaller. I don't know what, let's just say one foot in diameter. So you've got that gear reduction going on. So you've actually got another level of going here between the motor and the machine. So, you know, 19 to one ratio and then you have another uh, gear reduction there from the engine over here. So you're really multiplying that torque and you're reducing the speed all at the same time. So today's task though, is we gotta get the Babbitt bearings poured for these two shafts down here. And uh, that's what we're gonna be working on today. I'm probably gonna do one at a time. Uh, I really kind of need to do one at a time to get my gear tooth spacing right. Um, it looks like I'm gonna be able to center these up pretty much into the, the sockets down here and things should work out like they should. Um, you know, the machine was designed properly, which I'm sure it was in the, in the beginning, but we need to kind of verify that. So I'm gonna kind of do one shaft at a time. We'll do this shaft over here and then we'll come back and do this uh, next shaft to it. So let me kind of show you this down here and show you a challenge that I got to work around. 
So at some time in the past, before I started working on this project, somebody else had done some work, and I don't know who it was or when or whatever, but I know that they did the welding on the base. They put this uh, steel uh, frame up underneath it to give it some rigidity, uh, and they did a couple of other things. And one of the other things that they did is they actually replaced these shafts that are on this gearing here and put new shafting in here. If I remember right, this is uh, 2 and 11 sixteenths. Uh, for some reason, they like to use those sixteenth sizes on these shafts back in the day. They didn't use something that was a little bit more nominal size, but 2 and 11 sixteenths, if I remember right. And uh, anyway, they replaced these. I'm sure they were really rusted and pitted like everything else. But, you know, normally, if I got a good shaft, I would just use the shaft as the mandrel to pour the babbit on. But the challenge I've got is that they've cut these keyways in here. And the keyways, honestly, were probably cut a little bit longer than they should have been. And uh, it's actually getting into the babbit areas. Let me show you. Zoom me in a little bit closer so you can see it. So if you look here, the gear is installed. It's got the key kind of flush with it, but the key way extends. And this is the edge of the babbit. So the keyway is actually into the babbit area. Same thing here, this one's not quite as bad, but it does actually come over into the Babbitt's area. Uh, you know, it's right on the edge of this one. This one, it comes over just a little bit. So in my opinion, they cut these keyways a little bit longer than they should have been. You don't have to have a keyway the whole width of the, the part. Uh, these are bigger than they need to be. And when it comes to pouring the Babbitt, the challenge is, is that if there's a hole right there, that Babbitt's gonna go into that hole and uh, can, was gonna fill up and that's gonna lock it in place. Now you got a mess to deal with around that. Eh, you know, I could, you know, do it with the, the bearing pointed up when I pour the bottom one and then turn the shaft where it's pointing down on the other side. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what I'm gonna do is just not use these shafts for pouring. I'm gonna actually uh, turn a mandrel like we did on for the top, except I'll just use a piece of solid shafting to the size and I'll pour it there. And then also I won't have these gears on here, which was adding some extra weight and stuff to deal with while I'm trying to do that Babbitt pour. So back here on this one, um, they did a little bit better job on that keyway. Basically the keyway is the same width as the year and uh, it gets kind of close, but we probably could have gotten away with this one. But another one on this one here, um, you know, I need to, I've got some rings I'm gonna put on here to kind of use as dams. And with this gear in here, it's, you know, you got a little bit of in play in here. So it would be difficult to properly space that using my, my spacers that I'm, or my dams I'm gonna put in here. So again, I think it's gonna be easier to do this with just a pouring manager rather than actually using the, the shaft uh, to pour against. So step one for me, I think is gonna to be to pull this gear out, the shaft out, and I need to go to put it on the lathe and we need to just clean these up a little bit. I'm probably not gonna turn them, at least I'm not planning on, but I need to probably, well, I need to get the primer off of them because these were primed. And um, I'm probably just gonna hit it with some, um, some emery cloth and polish these shafts so that we have good surfaces for the bearings to run on. If I see a problem with pitting, we may just skim a tiny amount off on the lathe just to make sure that we've got a good surface, a good round polished surface for that bearing to run on. Now we're getting this part over here in the lathe and uh, using my gantry crane, or my jib crane rather. This thing has uh, really been a nice addition to the shop. Um, Probably could have manhandled this part if I had to, but no need to with the crane. So really nice to have this. I am right now um, getting this just set up in the chuck over here. I need to polish these out. Before I do, I need to get a center in the end of this shaft. Um, there was no center in either end when it was original. Just didn't need it. They, they probably just used nominal size material and just had to cut some keyways in it. But because we need to be spinning this, I need to support it from a center on the end. So uh, I'm bringing it over to this lathe. I, I probably would rather do this on my bigger lathe, but I don't have a steady rest to support it while I'm putting that in there for that bigger lathe, or at least I don't have one that I can use right now. Like I mentioned before, I've got one but I've got to do some work to it before I can use it and it's not ready to go yet. 
So anyway, we're going to set this over on the steady rest, get it mounted into the lathe. Ooh, let's see. I have to move this carriage over a little bit where it'll fit down. Once I get the center in, I may actually take it over to the other lathe because I'm going to, I don't have room to get my carriage up underneath this part. It's just too big. But uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. Let me get this uh, set up and we'll cut that center on the end. So I need to find roughly the center of this. I've got just a center finder on a square here and I've just got a scribe. And we're going to do this in multiple places. I like doing it from both sides. It'll give us a you know, they're not all going to be perfectly the same, particularly because there's a rough cut on the end here. So I kind of got an area there that's roughly centered. This, the shaft will find its center once it starts drilling it, but I do need to get it set kind of close. So now I'm just going to bring my center drill in, um, and we're going to adjust the height and get it centered up as close to that as we can, because uh, this when you move your parts around, you see it's moving the shaft up and down, left and right. When I move this one over here, it's gonna move it up also, and it's gonna move it toward me. So let me get that kind of lined up on that center that we got in there, and then we'll go ahead and drill it. All right, I think I got it pretty well centered up. Got the lathe running here. That's supported good. Tighten up all these. Put a little squirt of oil on there. That usually helps kind of quiet those bearings up a little bit. All right, we got a nice center to support that shaft while we're working on it. So as long as we're set up to get a center in here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a center in on the other end as well, uh, just in case I need it when I get over to the other lathe. I need to kind of polish this end out and get that primer off as well. So uh, make life a little easier. So let me go ahead and we'll get this undone. Uh, let me get here with the crane and flip that around. Well, I missed a little video there, but we got this center put in here on this end as well. And we are ready now. I think I'm gonna take this over to my bigger lathe where I just got a little more room to work on it now that I got the centers in here and we can get it properly set up over there. Well, right, we got this starting over here on the lathe and uh, I'm just gonna take a wire wheel and start by cleaning this up and uh, at least get started at it here. So we'll just come here with a wire wheel. So you can kind of see just a little bit of pitting on the shaft. Not bad, not very deep. Uh, this side's much better, but this is enough pitting that if you try to run that on a Babbitt bearing, those little irregularities are just gonna eat a bearing up. We really don't want a nice, slick, smooth surface. Uh, you know, a couple little small places in it is one thing. Typically, if there's a, something I like to see it more, if there's like a groove in there where it's cut all the way around, you know, it will cut a matching groove into the bat, but that's not really going to hurt anything. But when you got all these little, little dipples in there, that will wear it out over a, a large area and you will lose some of your support surface. So, um, no big deal. I'm just going to, I've already got it on the lathe. We're just going to put a cutter in there and I'm just going to skim this off until we get down below all that. Uh, just however much we have to take off to get up underneath it. We'll do it on both sides. And I'll make it the same size. It'll be a little bit undersized, kind of like we had to do with our rollers. But uh, you know, the beauty of Babbitt bearings is, is it doesn't matter what diameter it is. You pour the, the bearing to match it, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a nominal size. So um, you know, it's not like we're having to fit a, a bearing race up over this. The, the Babbitt becomes the mating surface. So. It can be whatever, and so that's what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut these a little bit undersized. Of course, we'll leave the middle alone here where the gear is. We'll leave the other end alone where the pulley's gonna go because those need to be the size, the nominal size. But for these barren surface areas, 
we'll just clean them up a little bit. And I think we are ready to start turning this. We'll come in here and touch off. And I'm just going to take about five thou right now. And just kind of see what it takes to clean this up. I don't want to take any more off than I have to. I can tell we're skipping. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off a little bit more. Take off another 10. That'll be 15 thousandths from where we touched off on the end. We'll try that and see how it looks and uh, we need to, we'll take a little bit more. Take it up as close to the shoulder there as we can get. About right there. Let's come out. I see it. Yeah, we're not quite below the pitting yet. Take another 10 and we'll just sneak up on it. and we're not quite ready over on the other side. Right there. We'll take another 10. I'm check this out before I pull that tool out. I don't want to drag back across it. I'm happy with that. We've got just a couple little small little dipples right there, but it's not going to be enough to worry with. So uh, I think what I will do is I'll just polish that real quick with some emery cloth. We'll get a measurement on that. We'll make the other side match. All right, let's get some measurements here. Let's see where we're at on the diameter. I saw a little trash come out of that micrometer. All right, so we are at about 654, 655. Let's get in a couple places. Yeah, I'm gonna call this uh, two inch, 655 thousandths. And looking up at my chart, it started out as 11 16th, which was 6875. We're down to about 655. Yeah, well, how about the 0.656 is 21 30 seconds. So we basically took a 30 second of an inch off the diameter. We're just a little bit undersized, not much at all. Uh, so about, let's see, it's uh, 50, yeah, we're about 30 thousandths undersized roughly, no big deal. All right, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna flip this over it's gonna be a lot easier for me to turn in toward the end rather than trying to go the other direction. I gotta go up against the other side over there. So it's gonna be easier if I just flip the whole part over. So let me get that done over here. And um, I'm probably not gonna show you everything, but we will uh, we'll do the same thing. We're not gonna turn the end of the shaft though. We're just gonna turn the, the area where the bearing journal is. All right, we're set up over here for the other side and I've got it all the way up against the chuck so it can't move forward. I did put some brass shims in up here to protect that shaft. If I'd really been thinking about this, I would have turned this side first because this end down here is not as big of a deal to chuck against. That's all right, we'll protect it with some brass. And I've got a mark on here. This is kind of where the extent of my bearing goes. The rest of this is just shaft that comes out that the pulley will mount on. So we're going to turn this down and we're going to take it down to the same measurement the other side, two inches, 655 thousandths. interesting looking at this cast iron hub that's on here. This little part right here is bouncing around. 
The other side's running pretty darn true, but I can, I don't know if you can see it, but I can look across the tops of the years and this is running pretty good. That's just the irregularity in the casting that you're seeing run out. Uh, the top of the machine surface actually looks pretty good. That's just the rough casting over here. It's cleaning up pretty good. I see a couple of marks in here. That's probably where we got some pit still. So it's not cleaning up 100%, but uh, we still got material to take off. We'll get a measurement after this pass, figure out where we need to go to, and uh, we'll get, get it done. Yeah, we still got a little bit of pitting in there, but like I said, we still got metal to come out. Let's see where we're at. All right, we're at two inches, 650, 65. 68. And we're going to 55. So we got what? Uh, 13 thousandths to come out. I'm just going to dial that in. Against that shoulder again. We'll come around to the back side and measure this. Yeah, we're right on size. And I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna polish that. I'm gonna probably go ahead and clean up this end of the shaft while I'm at it. Uh, get it ready for that pulley to go back up on it and we'll have this done and now that I know what the dimensions of my bearing journals are I can go ahead and start working on making a mandrel a pouring mandrel um, for that we'll use on both sides but uh, we'll just go for making our journals all of them the same at this diameter that we got right here to make life easier on me with this second shaft I need, I think, to take this gear off the back of it. It's just going to make it a lot easier for me to deal with, not having the weight on here. Also, because this is at the very end, I would have to chuck up on this gear and this cast. It's probably not running true. I'd have to forge all it in, so on and so on. Plus, I'd have to turn up against it when I'm turning this uh, bearing down here. So I'm going to just try to press it off. Um, I don't know if I can get it done over here on the arbor press. I may have to go to the hydraulic press to do this, but I'm gonna try the arbor press first. I've got this just sitting up here. I got a block of wood up underneath the bottom. This shaft should hit the wood before it drops out. Um, I'm hoping, so I'm just gonna put a little spacer in here. Uh, there does not appear to be any set screws or anything like that holding this in place. It's just uh, in their own friction. So we're gonna see if we can either get it apart here or we're going to have to go to the other press and I think we're going to be going to the other press. It's not wanting to move. All right. Uh, it was worth a try. Probably if I can get it to break loose, it'll start moving, but uh, I think we can do about 10 tons on this one. If I remember right, I can do 80 tons on the hydraulic press. Let me see if I can get it set up in there and do it in there. Uh, I may have to move my press in here where I can pick this up with the crane to get it in there. We'll see. So I think we are about ready to press this. Uh, let me just kind of tell you what we did. I, I lowered this table all the way down to the floor and I was able to get this in without having to get the crane out. I was able to get manhandle it in there. And then I basically just used my winch and winched the table up to the height that I'm at now. I've got some cribbing up underneath the bottom to catch the shaft when it falls. And I also clamped a couple of two by four guides in here uh, with the idea being that when that shaft drops out, it's, it's gonna be kind of captured in there up in the top part here to hopefully keep it from falling out. It'll hopefully just drop straight down and stop because uh, that's a big piece of steel to be flopping out on the, on the floor. I really just don't want that. So anyway, I think we're ready to press. Let's see if we can, uh, See if we can get this out without too much trouble. All right, I think we are ready. Uh, I got my little remote control. I'm gonna step over here kinda 
to the side where I'm not, in case anything goes flying, I'll be kind of out of the path. Hopefully, I will note that even though I've got this gauge up here, it's not hooked up. I've got another gauge that you guys can't see, but I can see back here on the back. Uh, and the only reason it's not hooked up is because I changed the fitting on this. I don't have a, a extra fitting to connect this gauge into the, the, the pump right now. I got to order one, so, but I can see my pressure over here. And with that, I think we're about ready. I'll go ahead and bring this down to where it's touching. I can kind of get things going. All right, we are loading up now. Drive, it's going. All right, I'm getting down to the end of my stroke there. I'm gonna release that out and put a little bit longer spacer in there. All right, here we go with round two. Pushing now. Not slapping anymore. We should be getting close to the bottom and falling out. There we go. All right. Weird. Pressed apart. So, without the big gear on here, I just decided to do this over here on the smaller lathe. It's just, I got the digital readout. It's just a little bit easier for me to work around. So uh, basically I need to do the same thing we did on the other shaft. I, the areas of the, of the journals, they'll be running into Babbitt. I want to turn that down to 2.655. Same as the other ones. Uh, get all the pitting out of there and uh, where we can use the same uh, pouring mandrel to pour all the bearings. So we'll go ahead and just do these real quick. And then we're going to flip this around and we'll do the other side. Okay. I know that this little mark on here was kind of where the edge of the bearing was scraping on the, or the edge of the area that holds the bearing was kind of scraping on the shaft. And this is the, where the, the uh, that gear pushes down to. So I'm gonna try to just shoot halfway in between those and we're just gonna turn it all the way down till we get to the uh, key. Don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but we're approaching being right up on the shoulder of that key right there. And that's where I'm gonna stop. We'll just go back to the beginning. I should have about 10 more thou roughly to come off of this. And that does seem to be cleaning up everything really nice. That's a nice finish on there. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, so we're Actually got a little bit more than that to take off. 678 right now. And we need to go to 655. Put that in the digital readout. 2.678. All right, we're approaching that shoulder again. Right there. Gonna face out on that key just to make sure we got it it's up to that same edge. Yeah, we got into it just a little bit, but that's fine. And that looks good. Let me uh, check my measurement. Yep, we are right where we need to be. Within about a thou of my number, which for Babbitt Barons is gonna be just fine. All right, I'm gonna polish that real quick with some emery, and then we're gonna flip this around and we'll uh, 
cut the other end. Hi right, guys, I added the steady rest down here just to give me a little bit of extra. Take some of that vibration out because there was just a little bit of a chatter on that shaft. It was not bad. It probably was fine, to be honest with you, but just trying to go for the best possible finish we can on this. And since I did add this in, I'm just taking a 10 thousandths cut now, which was about half of what we needed. Uh, I just want to make another measurement with the steady rest on here just to make sure that doesn't influence the uh, final dimension in any way. Shouldn't, but it might by a thou or two, and uh, just play it on the safe side. So we'll go ahead and cut this one, get another measurement, verify where we're at, and uh, finish this thing up, and then we'll pay, uh, polish it out. This should be our final cut. I did feed, uh, speed it up, speed up the lathe considerably, and it looked like I made a test pack cut a while ago. It looks like it was helping with the little uh, vibration, although I'm still hearing a little bit. I, hopefully it's better than what it was. And like I said, it, was, it wasn't that bad. I also put a little cutting oil on there. Just a real thin layer. That's where that smoke's coming from. Uh, it's the oil burning off more than just creating too much heat from the extra speed. But we're going to go ahead and turn this on off and uh, polish it out. I think we should be right on our numbers uh, on this pass. So here we go. We got our shafts all turned down. The journals all turned and polished. They're all the same size now. Uh, so they are, like I've said, a little bit undersized from the original by about a 64th of an inch, but won't matter with Abbott bearings. Uh, we're able to use all the original shafting that we had, so all that looks great. Uh, up next is uh, we're going to be pouring the Babbitt, and first thing I have to do is make a pouring mandrel, and uh, then set up to do that. I have to make my little uh, uh, spacer shims, dams, uh, kind of like we did on the bigger ones. I'll have to make a set for these. Uh, and we'll be ready to pour Babbitt and get these bottom bearings uh, done on both of these and get these ready to move on. So there you go. Well, guys, with this project right here being done, we are one little baby step closer to the finish line. And that's the whole name of the game is just making those baby steps until you get it done. Always a lot of work to do on these projects like this. Uh, again, up next, we'll be making the mandrels. I got to make the dam spacers to go in here and we'll be ready to get, get the bottom bearings poured. Uh, then we'll come back and do the top halves of the bearings uh, and moving forward on it. So uh, anyway, we're making good progress, getting a little bit closer. I'll be glad when I get this, uh, this all done right here. This will be kind of between that and the top bearing. That's kind of a, the big major steps in this. There is a little bit more Babbitt pouring to do for the bottom rollers, but should not be a big problem on those at all. Um, so we are making good progress and heading in the right direction. And with that, that is a wrap guys. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And, uh, as always a big, huge thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal. There's links down in the description below. If you want to help out there, it really does help out around here. Uh, helps pay the bills and uh, keep the shop rolling and giving me the time to actually do all the video videoing and the editing and everything else that goes along with it. I'm a one man operation. I do everything myself. I don't have anybody helping me in the shop or doing the post-production stuff. So uh, it does take a lot of time. And with that, we're going to sign off. We'll get out of here. Catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.